from claiming no one else could play Barry Allen better than Miller to throwing Grant Gustin's iconic portrayal under the bus. Here's why The Flash's director thinks Ezra is the best Flash ever. You heard that right. Andy Muschietti sang Ezra Miller's praises in a podcast, saying that no one could match their performance as the Scarlet Speedster. I know what you're thinking. The guy has a movie to promote, and he might just be saying this to drum up some buzz. But those are big words. Miller's played The Flash four or five times so far, depending on how you count the Snyder Cut. They got their debut in Batman vs Superman, going on to make a cameo in the first Suicide Squad movie, and following it up with central roles in Joss Whedon's Justice League along with the extended Snyder Cut. Miller also appeared as the Scarlet Speedster on The Flash TV show, playing an alternate version of the character during the crossover event adapting Crisis on Infinite Earths, and they showed up in the season finale for Peacemaker as well. Ezra clearly has a proven track record with all these performances under their belt. But what exactly makes them so special in Muschietti's eyes? For starters, the director claimed that Ezra pulled the dual role off brilliantly. In case you don't know, we're not just getting one version of The Flash in the 2023 film. Rather, we'll get to see two different Barry Allens. One of them is the variant that's gone through the whole DCEU story arc, with the other being a 2013 version that hasn't met Batman or joined the Justice League yet. Dual roles can be tricky to pin down, because there's always the risk of each performance being too similar. Now, if Muschietti's right, Miller's accomplished a masterclass in acting by keeping each speedster distinct, and he also singled out Ezra's comedic chops, going so far as to say that they're the best actor he's ever worked with, and he's not the only one supporting Ezra either. His sister chimed in to comment on their tremendous work ethic too. Barbara Muschietti's a producer on The Flash, and according to her, Miller poured their heart and soul into the role, describing the actor as professional and committed. Barbara went on to say that Ezra's brilliant performance defined the film, so you can see why both siblings are raving about them. This begs the question, will Ezra Miller be returning to play The Flash in a sequel? I mean, the film's about to crack the DC multiverse wide open and reset the timeline to give the franchise a clean slate. That alone makes it one of the most relevant DC films in the past decade, perhaps even the biggest non-Marvel superhero movie since Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. But everyone assumed that Miller would play The Flash one last time, setting the stage for a reboot and getting shown the door once Warner Bros was done with them. When Andy Muschietti was asked about a potential sequel, he said we'll just have to wait and see. The box office receipts will confirm things either way, but one thing's for sure. If a sequel happens, Miller will not be recast as Barry Allen. Muschietti said in no small terms that Ezra was the only person he can see in the role. According to him, Ezra was made to play The Flash. That might just seem like his opinion, but you've got to understand. Muschietti is about to become one of the biggest names associated with the DCU. Multiple sources confirmed that he's slated to direct the most anticipated film in the release schedule, Batman The Brave and the Bold. There's no official confirmation as of mid-2023, but all signs are pointing to him getting the big job. James Gunn's taking point by directing Superman Legacy, and it seems like he's assigning the second most important project to his right-hand man. That makes Andy one of the DCU's highest-ranking people. If someone this high up the ladder wants Miller for a potential sequel, that seriously boosts their chances of holding on to the role. I can only think of two people that can stop him from getting what he wants. First up, there's James Gunn himself. He's DCU's new top dog, with Warner turning him into their version of Kevin Feige. Gunn's a true creative, though, so I'd say he'll have way more control than a suit like Feige. So what's James' take on all this? Well, he's certainly enthusiastic about the film, but he's been more reserved whenever Ezra Miller has been brought up. Peter Safran's the other guy in charge, and he was a bit more open about it. According to Safran, Miller could have a place in the new DCU, but he's waiting for the actor to make a recovery before deciding anything. He did mention how Ezra's making a ton of progress and that he supports them on their current path. Once again, it appears that The Flash's box office performance is going to be the deciding factor. Speaking of which, things aren't looking too good on that front. Current predictions estimate that The Flash will bring in about $70 million on its opening day. That's less than half of Endgame's opening day. And given how The Flash is supposed to be a massive event film on par with an Avengers movie, the projections seem like chump change. To be fair, Aquaman didn't even hit 68 mil on the first day, and it went on to gross over a billion dollars worldwide. DC films seem to take their time raking in the big bucks, 
So even if The Flash's opening weekend is as disappointing as expected, that's still not going to take a sequel off the table. But let's say that the film's a flop. The Flash is one of the core members of the Justice League, so unless James Gunn wants to replace him with an alternate character like Wally West, it'll be pretty weird if he isn't included in some capacity. Will Muschietti be able to twist Gunn's arm enough to get him to concede? It'll be tough for sure. Mostly because of Miller's rap sheet. The actors attacked people multiple times at various bars, and even got a restraining order filed against them after they harassed a couple. Just a month later after that happened, Miller was formally charged with second-degree assault, and things started to get truly cuckoo around June 2022. You see, Miller had allegedly started grooming a 12-year-old girl back in 2016, but the truth came out only six years later in 2022. As if that wasn't enough, the parents of another 12-year-old girl filed a protection order against Miller, claiming that they'd harassed them and behaved inappropriately towards their child. That's just not the sort of thing people can forget, and fans were quick to point it out when the trailer dropped. Most of the comments praised the trailer, but the backlash against Miller was hard to ignore. Plenty of fans said that they'd never watch the film because Miller was in it, with many mentioning how weird it was that the studio was trying to sweep everything under the rug. But at the same time, the reactions weren't completely negative. A bunch of fans took to Twitter to say how the trailer changed their view of the film. So Ezra Miller's fate seems to be up in the air. That's still better than when the controversies were at their peak, though. Warner was in crisis mode back then, focusing on damage control and hoping that the quality of the film would distract people from Ezra's alleged actions. Sources also confirmed that the studio couldn't wait to get rid of Miller, even if they managed to keep their nose clean. Things look very different now that Miller's gotten such massive support from their director. And if The Flash reaches its full potential at the box office, something tells me the studio might change its tune. Money can move mountains after all, but there's one thing that can trump it fan reactions. I've already talked about the mixed response to the trailer, but there's another angle that Gunn, Muschietti, and everyone else in the studio seems to be forgetting. Grant Gustin's played The Flash for a decade, and he has a way bigger fan following than Miller. Scratch that, Miller's barely got any fans after the allegations. Well, half the world seems to think that Gustin's the best Flash of all time, no matter what Muschietti says, the fans are pretty vocal about their preference for Gustin and he's received plenty of critical praise for his performance, too. People dissed the heck out of the tweet revealing Muschietti's praise, so the DCU folks clearly don't know the fans as well as they think. And he's come under fire countless times for ignoring Gustin, especially when he revealed the longtime Flash actor wouldn't appear in his movie, despite the multiverse plot device making it possible. And even though fans were furious when they found out, Muschietti just seems to love Miller too much to think straight. So, from ignoring Grant Gustin's iconic portrayal of the Scarlet Speedster, to the way he's raved constantly about his lead actor's performance, this was why The Flash's director thinks Ezra Miller's the best Flash.